This is my dream. This is my passion. This is something that I believe in. If you're always afraid that things are going to go wrong, your business isn't going to succeed. Who would have thought Sots would make us millionaires? I'm a 13-year-old entrepreneur and CEO of Spurgo. I'm the inventor of the locker board. I'm 14 years old. I'm the CEO of Zolly Candy. And I'm the co-founder here at Rumble Boxing. The CEO of Play Versus. This is my hustle. 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 Today on My Hustle, we're going to see some extraordinary entrepreneurs who have turned their passions into profit. Follow along as we learn about their business, determination, and road to success. Why would I write a poem and waste two hours of my day trying to write this you know, BS poem when I could literally be fulfilling orders and making money? Sweet, so we're only done now. My name is Alaman. I'm a 19-year-old serial entrepreneur. My first big company was behind the entire fidget spinner movement, and now I'm working on making my next venture as successful as possible. And this is my hustle. New toy has twirled into our lives. Way to help keep kids focused in the classroom. Why don't these fads ever last very long? Which kids find new things to buy? So we're very open about the fact that we didn't like, invent them. Right. Um, however, we are one of the first companies to actually mass produce them. So I created Fidget 360 originally from selling fidget spinners to kids in my high school. I'm someone with like really bad ADHD, so I was looking online for other alternatives to help me like in class, and I found people selling these things called fidget spinners online. However, there was no company making them, um, so I went through trial and error, ended up you know building out a, a pretty cool sample, um, and then kind of just took it off from there. You know, we started off with 3D printers in my high school, and then eventually ended up going to a factory just like this one. I can't say that fidget spinners were my favorite trend. It was like chicken pot. Kids, a couple kids had it, before you knew it, they all had it. Last year, it was our end of year trip. Kid goes into a souvenir shop, spends $55 on fidget spinners, has no money for lunch. I confiscated so many of them, I have a whole drawer full that I auction off at the end of the school year. Wait, is it a test or like we're starting right now? Step one is to basically formulate the idea of what you want the spinner to look like. Put it in the printer, the printer will start printing. Once it's done printing, which takes about 45 minutes to an hour, uh, then pop in bearings. And you have working spinner. We started to find out about competitors when our friends would tag us in posts that competitors would make. Um, it felt good because, you know, if, if people are copying what you're doing, you know you're doing something right. But at the same time, you know, they are stealing away your customers, therefore forcing us to scale up production, scale up advertising, and scale up just doing well overall. Basically, you know, when you're a 17-year-old kid, you know, doing 5 to 10k a day in sales, you don't really think, you know, what can I do to make 15k, 30k, 100k a day? You're kind of stuck in the mindset of saying, you know, that's a ton of money, let me stay with that. The biggest failure was basically thinking that I was, like, doing really well, but then in reality, I could have been doing much better. We started at a point where we realized that we weren't as profitable as we wanted to be. Basically, you know, in the beginning, we'd run $20 ads and get, you know, $2,000 on our current investment, which is extremely good for, you know, basic marketing. Um, but then we got to a point where we started to be break even slash losing money. So at that point, we knew that, you know, this trend may just die out and we have to pivot towards something else. So like, here's like me as a kid. I was a pretty big troublemaker. I always got in trouble a lot at school. So like my parents, they raised me, you know, they maybe take like violin lessons, piano lessons, Chinese lessons. I just didn't find it like appealing. I didn't find it fulfilling. And you know, because of that, I always wanted to kind of be like a troublemaker. So I'm about to show you guys some emails that my teacher emailed my parents while I was building out uh, my company Fidget. Alan received a D the first quarter and he barely earned that. So far this quarter, he has not handed in his poem, zero out of 30, or his Google Plus assignment, zero out of 30, and his first two quiz scores are four out of 50. So far in the quarter, he has earned 12 out of 150 points. At the end of the email he wrote, he does, he does appear more concerned with other endeavors than school right now. Keep on, that was during Fidget, right? When I was doing, you know, thousands of dollars a day in sales. So basically my mindset was, why would I write a poem and waste two hours of my day trying to write this, you know, BS poem when I could literally be fulfilling orders and making money? So I would say probably when I was in seventh or eighth grade, I was diagnosed with ADD. Like there's a big stigma around it where they think that you're like, you know, different than everyone else, which is a bad thing. Uh, but in a lot of ways, ADHD and entrepreneurship go really well hand in hand. You know, you have to do a lot of stuff on a daily basis and not just kind of focus on one thing. Studies show that ADHD people uh, have more uh, potential of being creative and also to follow through in a way that they have so much energy. At the end of the day, you know, if you're doing what everyone else does and you're 
being normal like everyone else, getting good grades like everyone else, you're just gonna end up like everyone else. So if you know if you're different and you think that you could do better, um, you should always just go for it. So Fidget made multiple six figures. However, I would never consider myself, you know, a one-hit wonder. For me, that was a big accelerant towards what I want to do for the rest of my life. Me, me and Alan have talked about the Fidget thing a fair bit. That's kind of like Alan's first like big win, I guess. So now, naturally, like every other teenage entrepreneur, he's gonna want to one-off himself again and again and again until he burns himself out and then takes two years off, moves to an island, and then gets back at it again. <laughs> in 20 years, I see myself running an uh, extremely large company. Um, I want to employ hundreds, if not thousands, of people um, and kind of you know, have a really bigger impact in the world than just being a 19 year old with a few companies. When we come back, we're getting lunch and we're going to be paying for the four people behind us. I feel like a businessman. Wait, I am one. I was wondering if we can pay for the three people behind us or how many ever people are behind us. All right. So, we're getting lunch and we're gonna be paying for the four people behind us. Well, why I like doing that is just to make people's days. It doesn't really matter to me. As long as I can help them, I'm happy. The truth is, we forget the power of positivity. I'm in first grade, and I'm on a mission to change the world. I'm Kevin O'Bell. I'm the chief positivity creator of the nonprofit called Cool and Dope, and this is my passion. Gavin Bell is from Gaithersburg. He used $600 of his own savings to help others. He's helped to deliver care packages to hundreds of families during the pandemic. To date, we've helped about 18,000 people. What would have started to be just the care pack for grandma ended up spiraling into 73 care packs he actually made in March of 2020. So the thing that you're doing, it also points out there's nothing too small or too big that can be done when you're a leader to help other people. Like, you have figured that out. Considering others' obstacles in life, that's cool. And DOPE stands for Dish Out Positive Energy. And that basically means you don't know what's going on in other people's lives. So stay positive, be positive. What made me wanted to start is I didn't want my grandma to catch COVID. So I decided to use my life savings to make care packs for her and her senior citizen friends because when me and my mom were getting stuff to make a care pack for her, I was just thinking about all these other people and not just my grandma. And that's how it spiraled into starting a community pantry. So Cool and Dope is a nonprofit organization that's all about spreading positivity and doing anti-bullying work because I'm an anti-bullying activist. And we believe that we can do that by creating leadership opportunities for kids so that they feel powerful to speak up and speak out. He came to me and, and said that he wanted to do more in the community and help kids feel powerful, so that was kind of how Cool and Dope was born. This is where my community pantry is, and I stock it every week. All the senior citizens that live here come and get all the stuff that they need. So the mobile pantries officially started October 2020. Prior to that, we had a warehouse space that was donated where we ran a community food bank where families could come every weekend to get large care packs that would have both non-perishable foods but then also fresh fruits and vegetables. That space, we actually lost it in October. And so we shifted from doing kind of the more permanent location where people could come to doing the mobile pantries and also food deliveries. We just finished the community pantry. Now it's time to get to the storage unit. We're here at the storage unit and we're going to make a care pack for a family that has COVID. Time to open up shop. So what we're doing here is we're filling a care pack for family that's tested positive for COVID. I see Rice Krispie, it's my favorite, I wanna eat it. But it's also all about helping people, so. Yeah, now we're going to her house. Time to close up shop. 
after the break. I just wanted to start my nonprofit to make a little difference about bullying. Depending upon the day, we may get three to five kind of emergency care pack calls that we get through different resource centers of families that are have tested positive that aren't able to leave their home and can't afford to have food delivered. So we'll usually have to kind of drop everything and then go to the storage units or pull what we might already have at our home to go and drop care packs off. I just wanted to start my nonprofit to make a little difference about bullying. I'm just a kid, nobody wants to listen to a six-year-old kid, but now, two years later, I'm eight and I did it. One thing that he constantly teaches me is the ability to dream. And so he'll come up with a goal and I'm not really sure how to support him, but I try my best and then consistently every time he crushes the goal. Cool and Dope has kind of been like a mother-son bonding time. I'm a single mom and I'm constantly always working and the blessing that has been the pandemic is I have him here because otherwise he'd be at school and so that's time away from each other. But being able to do the pantries, being able to do, you know, filling the truck for Pine Ridge and just being able to brainstorm in general of for Cool and Tope has been really like our time together to co-create and it's probably the most beautiful thing that I could have ever asked for. He's the only child and generally he gets what he wants. So the concept of sharing is not something that he necessarily has to practice on an everyday basis. So it continually like impresses me, his ability to be so selfless. And he's always, I mean, that's just who he's always been, even, even as a toddler. It's a lot of work, but at the same time, it doesn't matter to me if it's a lot of work because I'm still helping people and making sure that they have everything that they need. At this point, I guess the sky's the limit. I don't necessarily want to put anything that's final on it because he always proves to me time and time again like he's going to move that finish line and there will never really be a finish line. On November 20th, 2030, my 18th birthday, I went to an all bowling worldwide. And I have nine years, so I might as well make the best of it. Cool and Dope, you know, is all about you know, creating positivity, whether it's creating a shirt that someone feels comfortable wearing and confident wearing, whether it's creating, you know, an opportunity for kids to come to a, a pantry to give back to those that are in need, or, you know, a family adopting a community, a mobile pantry to keep stocked for the community. My family inspires me. My mom, my grandma motivates me of how hard she works because when I need her to help me with my community pantry, she always makes sure that she can. In terms of the future of Cool and Dope, like I would hope that it would inspire, you know, families to have those candid conversations with their kids about not even just bullying, but how can we support each other to feel more valued and to have our voices be heard, and then continuing that into a larger conversation of what can we do in our communities to create safe spaces for people to feel valued. In terms of Kavanaugh, probably many more years of me being exhausted. <laughs> but I would hope, if nothing else, that you know he continues to dream big and find ways that he can kind of push that limit of, of what we think kids can achieve. This is what I do for a living. This is what I want to do. This is what I'll always do. Started off slow and just put a smile on people's faces first. That's what I would say, just to start. When we come back, a quicker hands, quicker timing, quicker reaction, it's, it's, it's off the charts. This product is amazing. Like Just putting it on for one workout and then seeing the results literally the next workout, quicker hands, quicker timing, quicker reaction, it's, it's, it's off the charts. Power Hand started with one mission and one vision in 2013, and that was launching into the basketball space with our first patented product, our anti-grip weighted basketball gloves. And truly, that one product helped us scale into multiple sports, helped us scale into multiple countries. I say, hey, look, you know, let's go through the Power Hand system. And then, you know, once they start kind of doing that, and, and wearing the gloves for a while. You know, good example, Jalen Mills. He's been wearing the gloves for a long time now. And lo and behold, he's a Super Bowl champ. You know what I'm saying? So that's the best testimony I could possibly give. When we see some of the best athletes in the world showcasing our products, 
or to meet someone or see someone in a gym that has no clue who you are and they're sitting there using your product uh, is, is pretty impressive and pretty humbling at the same time. One local small sports equipment company has gone global. This is something that's not only for football or basketball. This can be used in every single sport whatsoever and it's gonna be global in the next few years. We will be the largest global double minority owned athletic training and rehabilitation product tech company that exists on the market. My name is Danielle. And my name is Darnell. And we're the co-founders of Power Hands. And this is our hustle. Power Hands is a global athletic training and rehabilitation product tech company. So we design innovation that helps multiple athletes across multiple sports in multiple countries perform better. We focus on performance, injury recovery, and injury prevention. Power Hands has a robust offering of products, starting with our basketball collection. We have our anti-grip weighted gloves, Weight is positioned on the top side of the glove with an anti-friction material which makes it more difficult to maintain control of the ball when you're training. You've got our weighted basketball. You've got our power suit which is a 10 pound weighted body suit with weight strategically positioned around the body. You've got our pop-up defender which mimics a defender on the court. And our dribble sleeve which is a nylon spandex wrap that can be placed around any basketball taking away the grip and the dexterity uh, for the user. We also have innovation that helps baseball and softball athletes with our weighted pure grip gloves. And these gloves are amazing because you have weight on the outside and then the palm side of the glove resembles a regular batting glove. The idea and concept of Power Hands started back in 2013 when I was training some kids with a MacGyver-like product that I had created where I would put gloves and ankle weights on their wrists. It was a device I had used growing up. I learned it from Jason Williams, White Chocolate, who used to dribble gloves on and he could handle the ball phenomenally and so anything he was doing, I wanted to do. So I took the idea to Danielle and said, hey, I think we have a product that can impact a lot of lives and improve game because I was getting feedback from younger kids to elite NBA players that were saying, hey, I've never done anything like this before. We had a conversation in terms of the market, what was out there, and uh, where we could go, and that was kind of the initial idea. We're here at APEC, Athletic Performance Enhancement Center, and we're gonna be working with some of the most amazing athletes. And we get to integrate Power Hands innovation from our weighted glove collection all the way to our power suit into their training performance. At APEC, we focus on 3D movement systems, so make sure the body moves in every single plane of motion, sagittal plane, frontal plane, and transverse plane. One of the best things about including power hands is we haven't had to change our system at all. All it's done is just become an addition to what we have already, right? So now whenever you're able to use the resisted load through the power hands, through the power suit, and then be able to take it off and superset and be able to integrate with all of our equipment and all of our movement principles, um, what it does is it gives you that level of resisted and unresisted that actually helps speed them up once they take them off. Here at APEC, everything is very precise and scientific, right? So with power hands, there was a lot of science that went into this and innovation and that aspect of APEC and power hands combined is an unstoppable force. It's, it's literally science. I've been using Power Hands products for at least two years now. My favorite product with Power Hands is definitely the gloves. Just you know, being a quarterback and you know, using your hands most of the time it helps you with technique. It helps you with fast hands. It helps you with a lot of things. Ball grip. You know, y'all just got a pair of gloves that have grip on them, and now we can hold the ball better. We can do things with the football. I just started using Power Hands a couple months ago, but I can definitely feel the change after using them. Though. If I'm in outfield and I need a throw somebody out from third, if I'm in right field, I mean, power hands is definitely gonna help with that because uh, I'll be able to make that throw easy on the line with more below than I used to throw it. After the break. We are a company that is about family, that's about culture. So our customers make or break us. So what's so unique about Power Hands is we have a variety of athletes. We don't just cater to a professional athlete. We actually want to work with a youth athlete who is trying to work on the fundamentals of their skill. So when you think about the Power Hands collection, we have an athlete that's trying to make the team to an elite athlete all the way up to a professional. 
Of course, we wanted to touch the professional athletes, but really getting in and touching the youth was very important to us. The type of kids that we have as part of our Hands of the Future team, I mean, these are kids that are on the social media and most of them have a decent following or most of them you see their skill development and you say, wow, they're pretty special and they're pretty elite and they're gonna be a phenom. We need people who understand science, who understand our innovation, and how that applies to our athletes' performance from an everyday perspective. So we have started our Global Training Ambassador Program, and we've done so very strategically. So we have global trainers that are in the U.S., such as... Clay Max Skills, uh, who's one of the top defensive back coaches in the country. I trained Jamal Adams, uh, he was the number six pick uh, back in 2017. I trained uh, Jeff Okuda, he was the number three pick uh, last year. Uh, Damon Arnett was the 20th pick, I want to say, first round guy also. I can go on and on and on. Uh, Jalen Mills, uh, Super Bowl champ, you know what I'm saying? So quite a few guys. <laughs> Howell Hand plays a major, major role in regards to you know how we develop the athletes getting ready for pre-draft, pro day, that whole gambit. I'm a functional movement guy. You know what I'm saying? So the linkage between you know your hands and your feet, I think where a lot of people go wrong in regards to trying to enhance that is put guys on slids and I think they're talking in the wrong body parts, to be honest. Uh, you, you're talking in the core. The thing that makes you twitchy is your hands and actually you know, it's, it's coming out through your arms to your hands, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing that makes you twitchy. So you need an apparatus to target that particular body part. So uh, the power grip gloves, they're perfect for what we do and how I train. Let's go. <laughs> We are a company that is about family, that's about culture. So our customers make or break us, which we call Power Hands Fam. So our proudest moments have to start and end with our customers telling us how grateful they are that we created innovation that helps them every single day. To get a DM or an Amazon review or review on our own website, from a parent or a kid who's saying thank you so much for helping me get my handles right or thank you for helping me increase my bat speed or I love your gloves from a fitness perspective, that's pretty special. There was no blueprint for starting a business like Power Hands, you know, an innovative product that was the first of its kind and how you scale in different markets and, and in different economies. It continues to be a grind, but when you're passionate, you have a good product and a good team. It's work that, that doesn't feel like work and we, we just look forward to the, to the next journey. But not to mention when we started in 2013, we had just gotten married and we had our first child. So when we talk about grind and hustle, right, there were many moments when we could have given up when we were shipping outside of our garage and we had a two month old that was crying in the crib, but we decided not to. And so that's when we talk about hustle and what hustle really means for us, it's legacy. And that's why we keep going. I see power hands in the future going a long way. I feel like every athlete should have them, especially quarterbacks, especially wide receivers, especially DBs. I think the sky's the limit with Power Hands. Not only is it a local brand, it's a national brand and then an international brand. So that's the thing that I'm looking forward to kind of developing and riding along with Power Hands in regards to the international flavor. We are grinding and we're hustling because we want to create something that our great grandchildren can be proud of and make it easier for them one day. And I think other entrepreneurs that see us and that we indirectly impact, you know, we didn't create the business to go and impact a bunch of entrepreneurs, but I think just by osmosis that happens, and so that's very important to us as well. Whatever your creative outlet is, if you work hard at it, you can turn it into a career. With a crazy idea, dedication, and drive, you can do anything. These four entrepreneurs have shown us what their hustle is. What's yours? 